Hey there, Jesse Abney, producer on Need for Speed, here to show you guys shift. Let's drop the clutch on this bitch. We really feel shift stands out from all the others by bringing the true driver experience to racing for the first time. And this really comes from a first person driving perspective, our all new cockpit cam, which is really meant to deliver an immersive, visceral feeling of driving these high powered sports cars at the edge of control. Head mounted cam for the first time, a fully modeled 3D driver in the driver's seat, bringing all the effects of G-force, the brutality of the crash, to the experience for the first time in Need for Speed, we feel really sets this game apart from anything we've done before. Well, the opponent AI in Need for Speed Shift is really what I consider the third dimension of the driver experience, and that is a really good AI system adds to that immersive quality, whereas a really bad AI system tends to pull a player right out of the experience. And so by crafting AI uh, intentionally over a dozen personalities that operate within the grid, changing dynamically based on their position, the pressure in the race, um, and certainly their uh, knowledge of the track helps to deliver much more of a human fallibility. And so the AI is progressively competing, blocking, um, also misjudging corners, um, hitting walls, falling off the track. And so as the, the play, player progresses through each event, you see much more of an organic nature evolve in the event. Driver telemetry is the backbone of the driver profile, and in each event, the profile actions are leading to points, and those actions fall into two categories, precise and aggressive. So every move the player makes on the track in those two categories are being scored. In blue, the precise actions, in red, the aggressive ones. Those are rolling up into the driver level, and the driver level is kind of a subset of career progression. Um, even if the player isn't competing for first, second, or third every time a podium finish, the player's still progressing points on the track. They're getting those points for finishing each event, and those points are accumulating towards a driver level. The driver level is linked to unlocks, uh, performance modifications, cash rewards, as well as invitational events. So it's a whole separate stream of rewards and unlocks that's happening, even if the player isn't really progressing at the top of the pack. The driver profile exists over the entire game, and so if you just choose to play Quick Race, you're going to be accumulating to driver points for profile actions in Quick Race. You're going to be progressing your driver profile and your driver level, and you're going to be earning unlocks in Career, Quick Race, and Online. In Online, the game mode's uh, all-new exclusive to shift this year is the Championship Series, and the Championship Series allows the game lobby master to select a series of events, locations, for a tournament bracket to compete with uh, within in a head-to-head -head battle, single elimination style that allows the kind of the progression through the tournament tree to occur over a series of events and then for a champion to be to be dubbed at the end of that. In Need for Speed Shift, there's nearly 70 cars in the box. Uh, there are 18 tracks with over 54 layouts in both world-renowned locations like Spa, the Nordschleife area, including the Nürburgring, uh, as well as some fictional tracks that the guys at SMS have created like downtown London and Tokyo. We really feel an authentic racing experience is catering to the interests of both. And the style and tone of the Need for Speed series really bringing the contemporary cool car culture uh, into the simulation category with, uh, prof with racing rooted in professional automotive motorsport. Um, is really going to cater to the Gran Turismo and Forza fans, really bringing uh, them a, a fun and exciting experience of racing these real-world cars, real-world tracks um, in the Need for Speed tenants. And, of course, our, our arcade and action fans, really bringing them along for the ride, giving them that cool, fun, and exciting experience of an authentic racing game that perhaps they haven't found in other games. A number of devices or mechanisms we use, scalable physics, scalable AI, damage systems that can be visual or full damage, um, help kind of cater the experience to each of those types of players, um, really allowing them to scale the difficulty and the types of assists that are in the, the physics model to their preferences. And so this really does become at one end of the spectrum a pick up and play experience, while at the other end of the spectrum for those GT and Forza fans becomes a very serious real world force physics simulator. At this point, spectator mode isn't something we're supporting in the box, but it's obviously something that we hear about and something that we're making plans towards looking at how we can support it in the game. Um, I can get into more technical details, but that really, this, this really stems from our interest in listening to the community, listening to the fan base, understanding what they want out of a game like Shift, and then rolling those as a rolling feature schedule into something like the DLC commitment. Need for Speed Shift will ship on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC, and PSP September 15th.